Hello, Mission Control. Hey, Ryan, this is Mission Control Houston. How do you guys hear me? We hear you very well. We do have Northeast Elementary, or Northeast Nottoway Elementary from Ravenwood, Missouri with, with us today, and uh, you are welcome to, to take it from here. They have some really cool questions for you. Okay, thanks, Ryan. And uh, guys and girls, welcome to you know Mission Control Houston. This is where we actually you know, control all the systems and monitor everything on board the International Space Station. Uh, joining me right now is Todd Kwasny. He's one of our Odin flight controllers. Uh, Todd, what, what are some of the systems you're responsible for? So as a as an Odin flight controller, we're in charge of most of the uh, the core computer systems on the space station. So when I when I say core core system, I mean something that you know actually flies the space station. So something that you know talks to the the communication systems and make sure that we're pointing in the right direction and that we're we're tracking the sun, things like that. It's kind of like your outer space IT guy too. You got it. I'm, right. I'm kind of like the the IT uh, fix it guy. Okay, well, uh, we're real excited to take some of your questions today. Why don't you give us the first one? Question? Here we go. One day could Mars be inhabitable? I think the question was, one day could Mars be inhabitable? Well, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure. We have a lot of people looking into that, and uh, I... Uh, Unfortunately, I, something that I don't work with directly, so uh, I, I certainly hope so. It seems like it would be a great great thing to do if uh, we, we could get there and, and inhabit Mars. We cer yeah, we certainly hope so. I mean, there are, there are signs kind of that Mars may have had a climate like ours, uh, you know, many millions and millions and millions of years ago, even billions. Uh, so if some future civilization gets something like terraforming, which any of you sci-fi people uh, know is kind of like making a planet's atmosphere more like ours, I know some of the methods that are, you know, everything's very hypothetical right now because that kind of technology just does not exist. But who knows, maybe a human civilization a million years from now will have the ability to make an atmosphere and turn Mars habitable. But, I mean, right now it's it's way too cold. It uh, doesn't have, you know, Earth's protective magnetosphere, which protects us from all of that dangerous radiation. So, I mean, it would it would be a huge project, and it's something we as a civilization couldn't tackle right now, but maybe sometime in the future we could. All right, what's what's the next question? Um, did you guys have anything to do with the Angry Birds thing, the Angry Birds space? Wow. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, I've I played a lot of Angry Birds Space, and I'm a big fan. That's uh, that's for sure. It's always fun to uh, to, to see um, you know space applications like that, and, uh, and get to see uh, something that's something you're not used to. Used to you know playing the, the original Angry Birds, uh, you know watching the birds fall just just like they would here on Earth, but uh, seeing what they would do in, in space is, is a lot of fun. And I, I do know they talk to a few of our scientists, you know, help them get down things like. Uh, the mechanics of actually moving through a gravity like if I'm sure a bunch of you guys have been playing Angry Birds space uh, when you're actually shooting into an atmosphere you'll you'll go into an orbit and uh, that's they're actually pretty spot-on I've heard with the mechanics of doing that and also just moving through the vacuum in Angry Birds space so we we did have a little bit to do with it but I mean we didn't we didn't create the game all right next question um. Whenever you're up in the International Space Station, can you call from your cell phone if you have it? That is a really good question. So, um, that, you know, that, that, that's a common thing that the astronauts want to do. They're up there for a really long time, and they, uh, they, they really like to, to keep in touch with what's going on on, on Earth as, as much as possible. So one, one of the things that we, we give to them, you know, the ability is, is, a, is a phone. It's called the IP phone, and it's, it's very similar to the phone that you would have at your house where uh, you can pick up the phone and, and dial just about any number you want. We can't call up to them that way, but uh, they're able to, to, on their own time, call, call just about any, any number they want. They, they talk to a lot of their friends and family that way, and uh, it really helps them keep in touch with, uh, with what's going on, um, you know, the, the outside of just what they can read in, in news or email. But no, no cell phones on space, so they're not texting back and forth all day while they're no. supposed to be working. No, 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 no cell phones. They, um, they, we, we keep them on a, on a strict schedule during the day, so uh, they're they're not able to get distracted too much by, uh, by text messages or, or phone calls or even playing gotcha. Angry, Angry Birds. <laughs> all right, next question, guys. Um,
What time is it up there right now? Oh, that is a great question. So, so time is something that we, we kind of take for granted. You know, you, you look at a clock on the wall or, or at your watch and, and you see what time it is. But, but the problem with uh, time and space is the fact that the space station goes uh, around the Earth every 90 minutes. So, uh, so you know, at any, any given point, you know, it could be, uh, you know, a number of different different times on on the ground, whereas whereas in space, they're they're going around really fast. So what we do is we we adopted um, Greenwich Mean Time, so GMT. So it, it's it's the the time that's actually in Greenwich Greenwich, uh, England right now, and uh, all all the control centers from from around the country that uh, that interact with the space station, uh, that, that we all use the same time to make sure that uh, that we're all in sync, and uh, the 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 crew uh, uses that on board as well. I think according to our clock right now, it's 16, 11, and 23 seconds Greenwich Mean Time. So it's that's what time it is up on station right now. Uh, all right, next question, guys. Hey, Dan, this is Ryan Schaefer at the DLN. I think we may have uh, lost the school if we are patient, we may be able to reestablish a connection. Okay, Ryan, we'll be standing by, waiting for your word. Thank you. Okay, cool. She switched it to... Uh... We're back. We're back. Hi. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Mission Control, we do have Northeast Nottaway with us again. Welcome back. I apologize. All right. I hope uh, everything is still okay on your end, but I, 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 I'm hoping that uh, Dan and our guests today are still available to answer some questions. Yep, we're still here and ready to go, Ryan. Great. Then I'll let the kids ask some more questions. Okay, can we, we can we hear the answer to the last question about the time zone because we didn't get all of that? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so again, a really good question. Uh, time and space is is a little bit difficult. It's uh, something we take for granted here on, here on the ground. Uh, so uh, the the space station is going around the Earth every 90 minutes. So it's going really really fast. So it's it's not something like uh, we can't keep time like we do do here on 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 the planet um, because you know the sun sun rises and sets every 45 minutes. So what we've done is we've adopted um, a, a common time. It's Greenwich Mean Time, so the time that's in, in Greenwich, England right now. And uh, all the control centers that, uh, that talk and control the space station from, from around the world all, all use the same time so that we use the same time as the space station, um, and, uh, and we're all doing the same things at the same time. And looking at our clock right now, it looks like it's 16, 15, and 21 seconds, so that's about you know, 4.15, they use uh, the military, the 24-hour times. 
So right now, yeah, it's 1615 on board station. All right, next question, guys. Do you think any living organisms could survive on any planet? I think the question was, do you think any living organisms could survive on other planets? Wow, I, that, that's a really big question. And, uh, and it's another one of those that I, I know that we have a lot of people looking into it uh, and, and, and trying to do that, that very same thing. You know, kind of goes back to, uh, you know, are, are, uh, is Mars inhabitable and inhabitable and are, are other planets inhabitable? And, you know, lots of things have to happen. Um, between now and now and then, but uh, I, I certainly think that uh, that that's something that uh, it's a goal for a lot of people. And I I agree. I think it I think it is definitely possible. Um, I mean, a lot of the times we think if something's going to be alive, it has to have things like sunlight and water. Uh, but at the same time, we found organisms in some of the deepest and most uninhabitable places on Earth actually living. So there could be any number of things out there that are surviving in ways we don't even understand that could very well be alive. So it's it's definitely a possibility when there's as many stars and planets out there as there are, you never know. All right, next question. Um, um, what is R2 doing right now? What is R2 doing now? So right now, R2 is... Uh, He's asleep, if you will. So uh, um, when when the when he's not out and, and activated, then we we keep him all all uh, buttoned up and and kind of kind of sleeping in his, his own little uh, cubby hole, if you will. Uh, so I, I think that the crew isn't scheduled to to play with R2 today, but uh, I, I know coming out here pretty soon they'll they'll pull him out for for some more tests and uh, we'll, we'll get to to further expand and understand exactly everything that we can can use R2 for. And so it's a wonderful, wonderful tool and, and, a, and a, a great uh, asset for NASA. Yep. And, I mean, some of the tests that they've been doing lately, they've been kind of powering him on and moving his arms around, and I think he might have done some sign language the other day. Yeah, the, the other day I saw he, he signed Hello World in American Sign Language. It was, it was a really neat thing to see. So just kind of putting him through his first paces and getting him ready for some more advanced stuff coming up. Okay, our next question, guys. This is Maverick Cross from Northeast Delaware. Does the clock go back? the clock go backwards up in space? Do you get that one? I'm sorry. Could you, could you ask the question one more time? Could the clock go backwards up in space? Does the clock go backwards up in space? So. Uh, not not really. The 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 clocks uh, clocks in space you know operate just like they they do here on the ground. You know they'll they'll just uh, measure how many seconds or how many minutes or hours are going by, and they'll, they'll just kind of kind of take away. We, I, not that I know of that we've ever seen one one go backwards in, unless we're we're setting the clock like uh, like yeah, we, we would here on the ground. We haven't quite mastered time travel yet, but you know we're all hoping sometime in the future. Uh, one interesting thing that could happen in space flight, and uh, once you guys kind of get into some higher level science and math courses is the idea that if you're traveling really really fast time doesn't go backwards but it slows down um, and so there are studies being done with clocks that you know we send them out there and they travel at thousands and thousands and thousands of miles an hour and when you compare them to a clock here on earth I mean it's it, the time has progressed a little bit slower on those clocks but I mean it's such a it's such a small amount unless you're traveling the speed of light which we don't quite do yet um, it's not even noticeable. So they don't go backwards, but we may someday be able to slow time down. All right, next question. Astronauts have a favorite of what kind of food that they eat? Favorite food. Do astronauts have favorite foods? Uh, you know they they do, and and it's kind of a, a, an individual taste, just just like you would here on the ground. You know, sometimes you know you like a good you know hamburger or hot dog. Sometimes people like you know spaghetti or lasagna. So it's it's the same thing for the for the astronauts on the space station. They have a a, a wide variety of food to choose from, and uh, they uh, 
they they, they kind of have their own favorites. What what I'm what I'm told, a lot of them tell me uh, after they come back is they really like spicy foods. For for some reason, you know, when when they get into space, uh, something about spicy foods just is a little bit more appealing to them. So uh, I hear the shrimp cocktail is is to die for yeah, when you're in I've space. Yeah, I've heard that quite a bit. Yeah, so uh, so um, they, they they do have foods that they have a lot, a lot of different kinds is is kind of the, the big thing to keep in mind. So they they, they try a, a lot of different things. So pretty much almost whatever you like on the ground, you can have up in space. Just about to a degree. Yeah, j just about you you can have a um, you know all all kinds of different kinds of food. All right, next question, guys. Well, which where is the International Space Station over the Earth right now? Oh, wow. Where, Where are is we the over the Earth right now? Well, it looks like we are tracking right over the northern Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's So it's pretty much right in the middle of the ocean right now, and it's about 247 miles above the surface. So, and again, it's moving at about, I think, 17,500 miles an hour. That's correct. So yep. it's only going to be there for a little while. Pretty soon it'll be over a completely other part of the planet as it goes around in about 90 minutes. Yep. Looks like it's coming up pretty, here pretty soon on the southern part of South America, and then it'll fly up uh, o over Europe, and then uh, then over uh, um, go back over you know the Pacific Ocean again. Yep. All right. Next question, guys. Um, is there food coming like packages like military food does? Oh, that that that's a good one to know. You know, that, I think that's something that uh, that someone should ask before they become an astronaut. Is, is you know how how's the food come? So, like I said, there, there's a wide variety of food. They, they get to, to eat you know, a number of different kinds, but they're, they're kind of broken up into, into several categories. So, uh, the, you know, the military you know, style food that you're talking about is, uh, you know, MREs, meals ready to eat. So it's kind of a, a you know, a, a package where you, you can open and, and eat it right away. And, uh, and, and some astronauts really like the, the MREs. The, a lot of them come from, from the military or, or a lot of, you know, camping and hiking backgrounds. So uh, they, they're used to that kind of food and they, they eat a lot. Uh, so some food comes uh, dehydrated. So they have, uh, they have to in, and put water into it first. So they, they, they'll heat up with some water and make it warm and then uh, and, and inject it into, into the food and, and it kind of comes to life, if you will, and eat that. And then there's some, some food that's, uh, that's a little bit more fresh and, and, and ready to eat. But um, they, they don't get a whole lot of that, so it's 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 kind of a treat when they're able to eat some some fresh fruit and vegetables. Yeah, I know. Um, on the uh, cargo craft that just docked, one of the European ones uh, brought up some fresh fruit for the crew, and they always look forward to that and they get real excited because I mean, pretty much pretty much the vast majority of the food it's kind of in like these little um, dehydrated plastic packets where they have to put water in, and like you said, it kind of makes the food come to life after that. Yeah, exactly. And I, I know on uh, on the the cargo vehicle just docked, we make sure that we we pack the food one of the last things to make sure they can, they can get to it quick because they're really looking forward to that. Don't want to open it up and have all kinds of nasty smells coming out as soon as they open up that cargo vehicle. All right, next question, guys. What sort of was what kind of training do they do to prepare for everything? Was that what I heard? Yes. Okay. Training. Well, you know that that that's a big, uh, it's a really really good question and very insightful. Um, you know, quite often you see astronauts on TV and you know watch NASA TV and and see them floating around doing all these really cool things. You know, these cool you know science experiments and getting to play with R2 and and all those types of things. But what you don't see is the hours and hours and hours that the, the astronauts have to go through training. They they do all kinds of training, everything from you know learning about the the systems on systems on board the space station just in case something were to go wrong. They they spend a lot of time uh, with the uh, the science developers, the the science folks to sit down and make sure that they're doing all their science experiments correctly. And they're they're getting all the all the good data back back to Earth to to be studied and analyzed, uh, and then they, they do a lot of uh, training for specific tasks like uh, spacewalks. So they'll go and go into the neutral buoyancy lab and go into the big pool, and get in their spacesuits and, and practice doing spacewalks. So you know for for all, everything you see them do do uh, all the cool stuff floating around the space station. Um, there, there's many many hours behind the scenes where they they, so they train and learn how to do that. How long do they train you know before they actually launch on these expeditions? Um, I, I'm not sure the exact number. Um, I, I know it's, it's on order of years. 
So, was, you know, so sometimes, you know, astronauts will, will train for, you know, two or th two or three years before that they're, they're able to go up on the space station to, to do all the various things they need to do. So about two years of training for six months of actual space flight time. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, front-end stuff involved before they actually get to go up there and do all the fun things. You know, absolutely, and, and even while, while they're up there, we'll we'll do some training with them. You know, we'll you know we, we mentioned some of the different types of ways we can communicate with the with the astronauts. We'll we'll sit down and and go go through some additional training of maybe something coming up that they hadn't quite seen before. They need a refresher. We'll we'll sit down and, and train them while they're up there too. So a lot of training, a lot of school, it, it, it never ends. There's always learning to do. Never stop learning. All right, next question, guys. Do they have to train whenever they get back? Do they have to train when they get back? Uh, they they do do a lot of work when they get back. Um, you know, post mission. Um, um, one of the bigger things that they do is not necessarily receive a whole lot of training, but they conduct a lot of training. You know, once you've been up there for six months, you know, you you are the are the expert on 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 how to operate the space station and, and what to do. So uh, we, we really try to capitalize on a lot of their experience and, and knowledge when they come back to, to teach the next generation of astronauts, you know, um, you know, uh, just all the little ins and outs and tips and tricks of, of, of how to really maximize this, this wonderful space station that we have. So it's, it's there, there's not necessarily training that they receive, but they, they do conduct a lot of training. Okay, next question, guys. Do astronauts exercise up in space? Oh yes, boy, they do they! Quite a bit. Yes. So you know the, the the environment of space is really hard on the human body. You know, um, w w without without gravity, you know, the, your muscles don't have to, to to work as hard, and you know the the heart doesn't have to pump blood as as much, and and the bones don't have to support your structure all that much. So. Um, you know, one of the things we have to do to, to counteract all, all the, uh, the effects of space on the human body is exercise. So they usually exercise about two hours a day. So a good portion of their day is spent just exercising. They, they can do anything from running on a treadmill to uh, you know, riding on an exercise bike to, to, to doing some, some things that kind of simulate uh, you know, doing some weightlifting. It's kind of like a, like a giant bow flex. So you know, they, they, uh, they do extensive amount of exercising you know, to make sure that when they get back to, the, back to Earth that uh, their bodies still can, can work in this this gravity environment and so that they can still walk and, and move and lift things so it's it's very important to the astronauts to exercise we've actually heard some of them come back and they almost feel stronger just because of all that exercise they've been doing up on space I mean two hours a day it's quite it's quite a bit yeah yeah they uh, they, they really work their muscles and and sets a lot of habits you know a lot of them become come you know big exercise buffs afterwards because they're so used to doing it two hours a day <laughs> all right next question guys has anybody ever got hurt doing stuff? Has anyone ever gotten hurt doing things? Well, you know, just like like working, you know, uh, here on Earth, you know, there's some things do happen. You know, the, uh, you know, you get a you know a little bumper or a bruise, but you know, uh, they do a. A lot of work making sure that everything the astronauts do in, in, in space is, is very safe. You know, it's something that we, that we take very, very seriously and, and dedicate a lot of time. And you know, we talk about a lot of training, a lot of training the crew does to make sure that everything, every aspect of their job is is safe. So, uh, you know, you know, we, we uh, well, to my knowledge, I don't think an astronaut has ever actually been injured in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. And, I mean, even if they were, there are a lot of flight surgeons and people here, you know, in mission control and all around. Uh, the country that monitor all of the astronauts' health and everything like that while they're on board. So if a problem ever did arose, you know, we'd have the people here to help them handle it. Absolutely. All right, and I think we got about one minute left, so let's do one last question. Um, do they drink up in in the International Space Station? What do they drink? Tang, right? Tang. Tang yeah. is the drink of uh, of all astronauts. Um, they, they they drink a, a number of different things. They they drink a lot of water. You know, they just just like uh, on Earth. You know, water is really good for them, and then they they drink as much of that as they can. You know, in the morning they like their their morning cup of coffee. So they'll they'll drink some coffee. They have you know tang or orange juice to to drink. Uh, you know, various juices, some apple juice, you know, cranberry juice, things like that. So uh, you know, kind of an, like like the food, a lot, pretty wide variety of, of different drinks. And one of the uh, one of the interesting things about their water is it's all recycled. So some of the, one of the funny quotes that we hear is uh, sometimes you're drinking yesterday's coffee the morning uh, of today. So they actually, I mean, they have a recycling uh, system on board the station that recycles you know, human waste, things like that, uh, 
expirated water and then turns it back into potable drinking water so but yeah lots of water lots of again a lot like the food a lot of drinks that you'd find just down here on earth all right well i think that's about all the time we have uh really want to thank you guys for your questions hope you learned a little bit and hope you enjoyed your uh, visit and your stop here inside mission control houston Thank you. You are very welcome.